Patricia and welcome to my channel. Today I am going to be making you some mole sauce. This is a traditional Mexican sauce that is used on many plates, uh, but one of the uh, most popular is to use it with some chicken or some turkey. I believe turkey was the original meat that mole sauce was used on, but now it's very popular and it is used on chicken or even on some enchiladas. So let me go ahead and tell you what some of the ingredients are going to be. I'm kind of going to be doing this and telling you uh, the ingredients in case I forget any at the beginning because I don't remember all the measurements. I've written this down. So I'm going to be taking a look at that as I do this. But let me tell you what uh, some of the ingredients that I have here. First, I will let you know that I am making uh, some chicken right here. I have a pot here with uh, some thighs and they are on bone and skin and I've already cooked them and so I'm going to be using the chicken from there and I'm going to be using the chicken stock that's in there for my recipe. So that's one of the ingredients, chicken stock. The chicken is not necessarily, but if you want to make chicken mole, then you got that ready. All right, uh, but you could already buy that already made. All right, so let me show you what the rest of the items are. So let me move my camera down so that you can see what I've got here on the table. All right, so here on the counter, I've got an array of ingredients. Let me start off by telling you the chiles that we're going to be using. These are dried chiles, and we are going to be using a chile de uh, ancho, or ancho chili, as some of you have heard it being called. This is a uh, guajillo, or some of people call it cascabel, which means rattle, because you can hear the little seeds rattling inside of there, or like a rattlesnake. And then we have chile de arbol, you know, it just basically means it's a chili that grows on a tree. So these are our, our uh, chiles, and I'm gonna be using about three of the chile ancho, three of the uh, cascabel or guajillo, and I'm gonna be using six of these chile de arbol. And these, I'm just gonna leave them as is, but these other two chiles, I went ahead and I opened them. You can use your hands, just pull this off if you want. Uh, the stem part, just pull it off, just tear it off. Let me move these over a bit. And then you're going to just shake out all the little seeds that are inside. You could just kind of cut open into it a little bit and get the rest of those out. Just tear it up with your hands. It doesn't matter. You could use a knife or a little chicken, or sorry, not chicken, but kitchen scissors. So that's how we're gonna get those ready. You do the same with this, or like I said, you could use a knife cut into it like that and actually I have some little scissors here let's go ahead and grab those and we can cut into that this is another way where you can kind of get your fingers not to be used so much rubbing into these chiles if you use a, a little knife you can scrape up the seeds and these little veins that's where pretty much all of the heat is so of course if you don't want that heat you'll need to remove that now, the little seeds that are left over, you can toss those away or you can save them and use them as salad or pizza toppers. These are nice for that, but I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of them. All right, so let me tell you what the other ingredients are gonna be. I'm gonna be eating some tomatoes. So I've got these Roma tomatoes and uh, you could use just uh, uh, three large Roma tomatoes. I went to my grocery store and I didn't find any large ones. I just found these little small ones. So I went ahead and I got six of those. And now to those, we are going to want to remove uh, the stem part right here, just like so. And you just get your little knife. Let's just cut that out. We won't need that. And then we're going to need about eight of these small tomatillos. They come in this little husk. So all you're going to do is you're going to remove the, this husk. And then you're going to wash this really well because it has a little bit of a sticky, slimy bit feeling to them. So here I've got these already that I've already washed. I've got one yellow onion and I've already cut it up. You can use a white onion. I've got eight cloves of garlic and then I've also got four little cloves here, the seasoning or spice. And then I've also got one tortilla and I've gone ahead and I cut this into little quarter bits just to have those ready. Okay, so all of these are ready. I just have to rinse off this one little tomato. Okay, for our mole sauce, we're also gonna be using some nuts. And here I have half a cup of cashews or raw cashews actually. I wanted to use all raw nuts, but I couldn't find them all raw. The only ones I found raw were the walnuts. I mean, sorry, the cashews. You could use walnuts instead of cashews, by the way. Uh, but you're also gonna need a half a cup of almonds, and I've got almonds right in here. And under that, I've got a quarter cup of peanuts. So let me just show that to you 
right there. So I've got those nuts ready. I am going to be needing a tablet of some Mexican hot chocolate, and I'm using this particular brand, Abuelita. This is a very popular brand. You're gonna need a whole tablet of this. Uh, you may possibly go into a second one, depending on how chocolatey or sweet you want your sauce to be. Um, I'm probably going to go into a second one, but for now, we're gonna go ahead and get started with one. I will have this whole uh, uh, ingredients and the recipe in the description box below, so don't worry if, you, if I miss something or you're missing something. Okay, here I've got a half a cup of raisins, just regular raisins. And then I've got some spices and some seasonings. Okay, so I've got a small stick of cinnamon here. You can have like an inch or so of cinnamon stick. I've got this a little bit bigger. It's about maybe two inches. I'm gonna use that whole bit. I've got a tablespoon of some sesame seeds, a half a teaspoon of coriander, and half a teaspoon of anise. And you could add a little bit extra if you want. Uh, that's just up to you. In this little bowl, I have some dried Mexican oregano, oregano. And I also needed some dried thyme. And this is, let's see, this is about a teaspoon of each. I couldn't find dried thyme, so I went ahead and I got the ground one. It's no big deal. So I've got that right there. In this little bowl, I have about uh, maybe almost a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of cumin, and a little bit more than a teaspoon of some black pepper. Okay, that is just seasoning to taste. So let's get started and get all these ingredients toasted up because that is what we need to do for a nice, nice tasty mole. So I've got my, my iron skillet ready. You can use any skillet that you wanna use. You can put some foil in there if you just don't wanna get, um, get it all dirty. You can just use a piece of foil and roast everything on it. But I'm gonna go ahead and move this over to the stove so that you can see what I'm doing next. All right, so I'm gonna take all the chicken that I have been cooking and I'm gonna pull it out of my broth here or my stock and I am going to set it aside because I will be needing some of this broth. Now, uh, if you don't make your own broth and you go ahead and purchase some, you could get yourself a rotisserie chicken that's already been cooked as well, so you can save yourself some time because making the mold can take some of your time. But I do recommend that you make everything yourself since you are, you know, you're gonna go through the trouble. It's not gonna hurt you to put up a pot of, a big pot and boil some of this chicken and get that chicken broth done. Okay, if I can get this out of here, it'll be awesome. Okay, so here I've got my chicken thighs and I'm gonna take this chicken thighs and I'm gonna remove the skin and remove the meat off the bones and shred up some of that chicken for my plate. And this is my chicken broth in there. And you could uh, strain this if you wish and get all that out of there. Okay, I've got some water boiling and that's pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop that. My skillet is nice and hot. So I'm going to put my chiles in there and just put them whichever way because you'll turn them around. We're gonna toast them up a little bit. Let's get those, see if they all fit in there. And, uh, and then of course our chiles de árbol right in there. Okay, in this, uh, pot of boiling water. I'm going to take these four cloves, throw those in there, and I'm also going to take my half a cup of raisins and throw that in there. And then I'll show you what I'm going to do. Okay, so first we want to toast these little chilies or chiles. And we want them to kind of blister up a bit. This one is doing stuff, but let me open it up because it's a pretty big one. So I'm just going to spread it like that. But I just want to show you how it's got some blistering right here. And it looks really black and burnt in the, in the camera, but it's not. Okay, so this is blistering up real nice. Let me turn them around. This one needs a little bit more on this side. Okay, so I'll be back in just a minute when this is all done. Okay, so this just takes a couple of minutes to toast on this uh, skillet. So it doesn't take very long, but I will give you a word of warning, and I'm already wanting to do this. <coughs> That's it. This will make you cough. All the fumes coming from the chiles will make you cough. 
Uh, so just do it in a little ventilated area or have some um, a little fan going. Okay, so just warning on that. Okay, so then I've got uh, all of these and I'm pulling out and I'm putting them in the water with the cloves and the raisins. And this is just going to rehydrate these chiles. And it's also going to pull some of that natural, <coughs> excuse me, natural oils out. That's what we wanted to toast them up in here also. All right, so the chiles have been put in this pan and I've gone ahead and I put a little bowl over it. And this is just to make sure I push down the, the chiles that are in the little pot and they are getting uh, softened. And this is going to rest for 20 or 30 minutes while I do a whole bunch of other stuff. And we'll just leave that alone with the uh, raisins and the cloves in there. I've got a pan over here that I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna make some rice. <clears throat> this is not part of this recipe, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this going. Let's see, we need to use the back. Let me get this get hot here. Okay, so I've got our pan here still, our iron skillet. Or what is this, a cast iron? Yes, there we go. All right, so we're gonna put these onions right in there. You don't have to break them up as I'm doing, but I like to do that. So I'm gonna toast them up a little bit. <clears throat> in the same pan, we don't have to clean it up. We're just gonna use the same pan. All right, where well, I'm also gonna throw in the garlic. All right, this is gonna to get toasted just a couple of minutes just to get those flavors out. And also a lot of the flavors are also getting into my, my pan here. It's also seasoning it so that when I put everything back in here, uh, those flavors will get back into my sauce. All right, now that I've got these onions toasted and the garlic toasted, I don't want to burn them. This pan is getting hot. I'm gonna pull all this out and put it over into a plate, set it aside. So I'm getting all this onion out of my little skillet now. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put my Roma tomatoes in because there are not three large ones. Uh, so they're, they're six small ones. They're gonna take pretty much a lot of space in here. So I'm gonna roast these up first. Well, I think I can fit my tomatillos in there. I sure can. Okay, let's go ahead and put those in there as well. These are gonna take a little longer to roast. Uh, so we're just gonna leave them on there a minute. I'm going to check them once they're gotten black and, or like bubbly underneath, the skin is getting bubbly, and we can turn them around and uh, continue toasting them all the way around. Okay, let me check out these tomatoes and see how they got that. Okay, so we want that on, on all the sides, so we're going to turn them. And get them roasted on every side. See, it's my hands here. Sometimes it's easier than using them, so tongs. Okay, our tomatoes have uh, roasted up pretty good here. It's been a few minutes. We're going to go ahead and um, get those out and put them aside as well. And I'm not going to mind all these bits on the bottom, okay? Just leave those in there. Don't worry about it. I want to take it out this fine. Okay, so now we're going to uh, toast our nuts. And the first one I'm going to toast is going to be my cashews because they were raw. Now, if they were all raw, I put them all at the same time. But I'm going to put these in first. Let them get a little toasty first. All right, I've gone ahead and removing my cashews before they get all burnt. They are getting real nice and toasty. And I'm just gonna throw in my pecans and my almonds since they're already, the, pe the, pe the peanuts were already uh, roasted a little bit. So I don't need to get them in there for too long. I just wanna, you know, warm them up and bring out the flavor. Okay, <clears throat> we're just gonna let that toast for a little bit. I'm gonna pull those out. The almonds are so nice and thin. They don't need a lot of time in there. Okay, now my nuts are out of my pan and now I'm going to put uh, my sesame seeds, the coriander, the anise seeds also, and uh, my cinnamon. These are gonna toast next and that's not gonna take very long either. And then we're gonna go 
to our next step. All right, in that same pan where I've been toasting everything, I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of vegetable oil. If you wanna use a shortening, you can use shortening like a Crisco or a, you know, a lard or even, I wouldn't use olive oil because I don't really think olive oil is good enough for frying things, but you could uh, use that as well. And now I'm gonna take the tortilla that I cut in little quarters and I'm gonna fry that up in the oil. And I wanna get that real nice and really fried till it gets toasty brown. I think it's amazing how so many different um, ingredients go into mole and how they are very diverse and different depending on what region or country they, the mole is made. And you know how uh, someone thought, oh, I'm gonna put a tortilla in there. You know, it's awesome. Okay, so we want to toast this up a little bit more and then we're going to pull it out and put it back into our little container and set that aside and we're going to move over to our counter. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to grind up our cinnamon and the uh, coriander seeds, the anise and the sesame seeds. Now, if you want to put this in a mortar and grind this up by hand, you can do so or you can use a little grinder as I'm using. I've already got the cinnamon in there and I've got it started a bit here. Going. I've got some of it falling off to the sides here, and that's fine. So I'm gonna take that bit and shake it off into my little container here. Okay, so I've got some of that cinnamon there. Let me go ahead and put it in this little container here. Probably should've just gone straight to this little bowl. I just realized this is my lid. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna put the rest of these in there. Let's see. Let me do some more of that cinnamon. Oops. Okay, that's good enough. Oops, that doesn't come out. Let's get those all in there. All that cinnamon and then I'm going to go ahead and pass the rest of it through this colander here strainer so that I don't get those big pieces of cinnamon this is not going to grind them all completely I do have a little mortar here and I will try and do that on there if you want to save yourself this trouble just use some powdered or ground cinnamon okay the rest of it in there okay now let's get these little nuts or seeds them up as much as possible and I'm going to do the same thing put this on here pour them through there and just oh my god that smells so good <laughs> all those little seeds and toast it up and I'm just going to pass them through the strainer so whatever goes through it will obviously be used and uh, anything that doesn't well we can get rid of that. All right, that's good. So now we've got all this all grounded up and it smells delicious. So let's go ahead and do the next step. All right, so now I've got the almonds and the peanuts in here and I'm also gonna grind them up. And so you can see that. And in a cup here. Being careful because of the blades in there. Probably use a little spoon to do all that out. Yeah, there we go. And of course, that also picked up some of the leftover spices that were in there. Okay, now we want to do the cashews. Okay, so there's a couple of cashews in there that just didn't want to break up, so we're not going to use those. I'll just take those out. 
Mm-hmm. Delicious. Nice and toasty. This almost tastes like a this uh grounded cashew here. Almost tastes like a mazapan. It's candy. And I think mazapan is made with um with almonds actually. Hmm, I'll have to look that up. Okay. That's not to be confused with marzipan. I think that's something else. Masa pan. All right, everyone. So I'm back with my chiles that have been soaking in this water, and they've been soaking for 30 minutes at least, a little bit more, but you only need about 30 minutes for them to soak. I'm going to put this into the blender, all of them, and uh, actually the water that they were placed with, and then all those raisins. We're going to put them in the blender and liquefy that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take this off here, and now we're going to strain them and into a bowl. So just pour that all in there. Now those cloves that were in there, um, if they didn't obviously they didn't grind up in, in this uh, blender, they will not go through the uh, sifter here. So those will come out in this. So we're not going to worry about them. And I'm gonna take a little bit of this chicken broth, pour that in there, just a little bit, and just roll it around my, my blender container, gets most of that leftover chili. Okay, and that's also gonna help us push through our strainer. Okay, so just keep doing that till you've got it all going through and you'll have some little bits left in your strainer and you're going to want to just toss that out and um, we'll rinse off our blender and we'll rinse off our strainer and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, I just wanted to show you real quick. I've gone ahead and I pushed as much of this as I can through my strainer and I've got this kind of a little bit of a wad here that looks kind of like a thick paste. So we don't need that. We're gonna go ahead and toss that out. And um, let me show you what this looks like. Kind of made a little bit of a mess in here. But that is what that chili is sauce is starting to look like. And as you can see, it is starting to look like mole. And that is the beautiful color that um, the my mole will have when I'm done. A little bit lighter than that, of course, but that's what it's looking like. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean all this up and we're gonna go ahead and go to our next step. All right, so now we want to go ahead and put all our tomatoes and the rest of our ingredients into the blender, and we're going to go ahead and strain that as well. So let's go ahead and throw in our tortillas, all these tomatoes. I think I'll do a few items at a time so my blender's not so full. I'm going to add a tiny tad of this chicken broth in there just to help everything move along. Let's go ahead and add some more items in there. That looks pretty. Let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. You see that? Okay. All right, now my little tomatillos. Get those onions in there. Any, any liquid that was on my plate. Get that, get that on there. We, Use the onion itself to scrape that off. A little piece of onion escaped over here. Okay, so now the lid back on, and we're going to continue until we got all our ingredients in here. 
All right, so I'm gonna add my oregano and my thyme in there. All my little seeds and the cinnamon. Get that in there. Just a little bit of that thyme left in there. And my nuts. Let's blend them as well as we can. Just add a little bit of extra stock if you need that to help get things moving because the tomato sauce is getting thick. Okay, so there we go. Let me show you what that looks like. All right, we're gonna go ahead and pass this through also, through our strainer. And I'm gonna do a little bit at a time. I don't know what I did with my spatula, so I'll use this little spoon. And just keep doing this till you're done. All right, I've mixed up my my sauce here in my little bowl where I was adding the chiles and then I added the tomato and peanut that I blend it all together and I've mixed it around just so that we have this really nice color here. And now I've got the same oil that I had poured into my pan when I toasted up my tortilla. I'm going to leave that same oil in there. I'm going to pour all of this yummy sauce into my pan as much as I can fill in there without overflowing. I think I can add a little bit more. Okay. Just put this on a large burner instead. Okay. And now to this, I'm going to add the uh, the salt, the pepper, and the cumin seasoning that I had ready. Again, that was about a teaspoon of black pepper, half a teaspoon of the cumin and the salt. This is going to splatter, by the way, so just keep that in mind. And you want to just stir this. And what we're going to do now is we're going to add our chocolate. So I've got a tablet here that I've already broken up some. And I'm going to throw those in there. And that chocolate will melt in the heat. And this is going to take about 20 minutes to simmer and we're also going to be stirring it occasionally often you know just keep an eye on it and um, that way the chocolate will start to break up in there so you just want to kind of like push down on the little tablets and smoosh them around just to make sure they've broken up and then you'll give it a little taste and if you feel like you want to add more of the chocolate to it go right ahead otherwise I think that one tablet will be enough. I think I'm going to actually probably end up putting a little bit more. I have it ready here just in case, but I haven't broken it up. Also, while I'm going to be doing this, I'm going to be alternating stirring. Uh, I'm also going to take my chicken, grab another uh, little pan to put on here, and I'm going to shred up some of this chicken without the bones, obviously, and without the skin. Shred up some of it and warm it up some so that I'm going to use some of this mole to mix in with it so that I can have some chicken mole. But for now, this is the mole sauce all by itself and uh, let's go ahead and wait 20 minutes and I will be back all right my chicken mole is done I have taken it off the stove and brought it over to my counter so we can go ahead and serve some up. I've got my rice here and I've already gone ahead and put some chicken and rice on my plate here. So I'm gonna go ahead and serve myself some of this mole sauce over it. And just coat it. And you can take uh, half of this mole and mix it up with some chicken on uh, in a skillet if you wanna do that. Or you can save uh, also half of it Put in a container, you can even freeze it. Let it cool off first before you put it in the fridge. Uh, put it, you can put it in the freezer if you want and it'll be good for up to six months, okay? Other than that, um, you'll probably be eating it way before that because you can use it for some enchiladas. So instead of the enchilada sauce, you can use the mole sauce. 
So here we go. Here is my mole sauce and I poured it over some chicken and I've got some rice on the side. So let's take a taste. And I have to uh, say, I've already tasted the sauce a couple of times and I did add that second tablet of chocolate so it does have two of those in there. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Okay, maybe I want another little, another little bit. This is so good. Mmm. I love the sauce. Now, you're probably going to want to prefer it with a little bit less chocolate. I happen to love it just the way it is. I was tasting it as I was adding the chocolate. And I was happy with two tablets. But you probably want to put maybe one, one and a half tablets in there. And that's it. That is my mole made from scratch. That you can use with... Um, turkey or chicken or on some enchiladas there you go give me a big old thumbs up i'm gonna give myself a big old thumbs up and uh leave a nice comment down below let me know what you think and any suggestions that uh any other foods that you'd like to see me make for you and um make sure you subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and share on your social medias let's see let's get this pan up and get a close look of it all right so here we go we're gonna bring this pan up and there you go, and as always, enjoy.